Let's look at a problem we've seen before. Here we see a man on a ladder, he's holding a ball, and he's going to drop the ball a distance of 5 meters, which is the height of the ladder. And the question is, if he drops it from rest, and it drops straight down, what speed is the ball going to hit the ground? Just before it strikes the earth, how fast is it going to be going? Now we have a choice. We can use our standard kinematic equations, or we can go and use work energy, as we see on the right, the formulas on the right. And we want to choose the appropriate formulas from either side. Both should yield the same answers. We've done this many, many times. Let's see how this works. Let's first solve this question using kinematics. Now, on the left-hand side, we see two of our kinematic equations involve time. So we want to avoid those and look at the one that does not have t in it. We know our initial velocity, v0, is 0 because we're starting from rest. We know the ball is going to fall a displacement of negative 5 meters. We know the acceleration due to gravity at this location is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And when we plug all of this in, we get a final velocity of 9.9 .9 meters per second in the downward direction. A fairly straightforward kinematics question. Now let's repeat the question using what we know about work and energy. The ball starts from rest, but it's a certain height off the ground. In fact, it's 5 meters off the ground. So it starts with potential energy. And we know that as the ball falls, that potential energy is going to get converted into kinetic until ultimately all the potential energy it started with becomes kinetic just before it strikes the ground. So what we're going to use is conservation of energy, where we say that the change in the potential energy of the ball is equivalent to the change in kinetic energy. In other words, the initial potential energy of the ball all eventually gets transformed into kinetic energy as it hits the ground, as we see in the equation on the lower right. And if we solve this equation, we see that the masses, in fact, cancel on either side, and we find that the final velocity of that ball, in fact, depends only on g and h. And we get the same answer that we had on the left-hand side, 9.9 .9 meters per second. So we can use kinematics, and we can use work energy, and we could achieve the same results. Now let's see what happens when this ladder is supersized. Imagine the ladder is two times the radius of the Earth, really, really, really tall, and extends off into space, as we see. Now let's run through the process one more time, and we'll see if we can determine what's similar about this question and what's different about this question. Now once again, the ball starts at the top of the ladder, and as we drop the ball, we know it's going to start to accelerate towards the Earth. So if we were to use kinematics, once again we would focus on our first equation, where v initial is 0, and d in this case is 2 times the radius of the Earth, or 12.72 times 10 to the 6 meters. If we use our work energy theorem, we might be inclined to say that the potential energy starts at mgh, and ultimately, as it falls, is converted to kinetic energy. But here lies the problem. g is 9.8 meters per second squared, or the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared, only on the surface of the Earth. Where the ball initiates, the acceleration due to gravity is only 1.09 meters per second squared. We know that g only remains at 9.8 while you're very, very close to the surface of the Earth. At these great distances, the value of the gravitational field strength drops off dramatically. Now since kinematics involves equations that all have a constant acceleration, we can no longer use these formulas. The acceleration clearly is varying. In fact, it's varying quite a bit from 1.09 all the way down to 9.8. So we have to rule out our kinematic equations as they all involve acceleration. We have to focus on work and energy. So let's get rid of our kinematic equations. Now on the work energy side, we know that g varies. So our first equation where we say EP is mgh is not going to work for us because g varies throughout the flight. We have to use something that's more universal. Now the only two equations that are truly universal are the kinetic energy, which depends on the speed at the moment, and the universal gravitational potential energy as given by negative g m1 m2 over r. Now just as before, we know that the ball starts with potential energy at the top, and as the ball drops through the air picking up speed, this potential energy gets transformed into kinetic. 
until the ball reaches its final speed just before it hits the surface of the Earth. So initial energy is potential, and right before it strikes the Earth, we've got kinetic energy. But the problem is when you use this new equation for potential energy, R in the formula is the distance to the center of the Earth. So not only does it start with potential energy, there's still potential energy at the end. So you've got two types now, kinetic and potential energy at the end. So our conservation of energy equation looks like this. EP initial goes into EK final and EP final, where our EPs are written as negative G M1 M2 over R initial. Now one last question before you go. If the next part of the question asked how much work is required to take the ball back up to the top of the ladder, you should focus on work is change in energy and not force times distance. And the reason would be very similar to why you can't use kinematics. The force varies over that entire distance as the force gets weaker and weaker and weaker as you get further and further away from gravity because the gravitational pull gets weaker and weaker.